what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today guys, we back killed to the video guys. So I'm excited, we are making a new video. This is Oxford Mathematician Destroys the Atheist. Hmm. 16, okay, 15 minutes brainers. Okay, this is my first time checking this out and I'd love to give it a try with you guys. You know how to talk less over here over more? Let's get into this video. What I am amazed at is that serious thinkers today continue to ask us to choose between God and science. That's like asking people to choose between Henry Ford and engineering as an explanation of the motor car. What you're about to listen to is absolutely exceptional. It's John Lennox with Oxford Union making his case for God. It's extremely dense. He packs a lot into a little amount of time. So feel free to pause, rewind, whatever you need to, to make sure that you're really grasping each and every idea that he lays out. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. I believe in God. I believe in the supernatural God who created the heavens and the earth. I believe in a God who holds the heavens and the earth in existence. I believe that on the basis of rational evidence. And as we look at the rise of science in the 16th and 17th centuries, Alfred North Whitehead and many others commented that men became scientific because they expected law in nature and they expected law in nature because they believed in a lawgiver. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm not ashamed of being both a scientist and a Christian because arguably Christianity gave me my subject. What I am amazed at is that serious thinkers today continue to ask us to choose between God and science. That's like asking people to choose between Henry Ford and engineering as an explanation of the motor car. So good. When Newton That's true. discovered his law of gravity, he didn't say, I've got a law, I don't need God. No, he wrote the Principia Mathematica, arguably the greatest work in the whole history of science. Because he saw that God is not the same kind of explanation as a scientific explanation. God doesn't compete agency does not compete with mechanism and law. Why is there something rather than nothing? Alan Sandage, the brilliant cosmologist who became a Christian in his 50s, said God is the answer to that question. But people are now so desperate to show that the universe created itself from nothing, which seems to me to be an immediate oxymoron. If I say X created Y, I'm assuming the existence of X to explain the existence of Y. If I say X created X, I'm assuming the existence of X to explain the existence of X, which simply shows that nonsense remains nonsense even if high-powered scientists utter it. That might be worth rewinding in case you missed it the first time. That is yeah. such a good yeah. point. It reminds me a little bit of G.K. Chesterton who said, it is absurd to complain that it is unthinkable for an unthinkable God to make everything out of nothing and then to pretend that it is more thinkable that nothing should turn itself into everything. That's true. The heavens declare the glory of God, says the ancient psalm. And we've unraveled a bit of that, seeing the fine-tuning of the fundamental forces of nature. It's something that's so striking to scientists that it demands explanation. And it seems to me that Arno Penzias hit it right. He is the Nobel Prize winner who discovered the microwave background on which a lot of the evidence for the Big Bang is based. He said astronomy leads us to a unique event, a universe which was created out of nothing, one with the very delicate balance needed to provide exactly the right conditions required to permit life, and one which has an underlying, one might say, supernatural plan. But I want to come to what I think is one of the fundamental arguments for theism. <clears throat> I take it this house <clears throat> believes in reason. That's why we're all here. And as a scientist, I believe that the universe is rationally intelligible. 
That is something that has struck some of the geniuses of science as demanding an explanation. Einstein said the only incomprehensible thing about the universe is that it's comprehensible. Hmm. And Wigner talked about the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics. How is it that a mathematician thinking in her head in here can come up with equations that seem to fit the universe out there? Well, how is it indeed? Because the irony of the atheist position here is evident. My atheist friends, and I have many of them, tell me that the driving force of evolution, which eventually produced our human cognitive faculties, reason included, was not primarily concerned with truth at all, but with survival. And we all know, ladies and gentlemen, what has often happened and still happens to truth when individuals or commercial enterprises or nations feel themselves threatened and struggle for survival. The leading philosopher Alvin Plantinga of Notre Dame says, if atheists are right that we are the product of mindless, unguided natural processes, then they have given us strong reason to doubt the reliability of human cognitive faculties, and therefore inevitably to doubt the validity of any belief that they produce, including their atheism. Their biology and their belief in naturalism would therefore appear to be at war with each other in a conflict that has nothing at all to do with God. Yet my atheist friends still insist that it is rational for them to believe that the evolution of human reason was not directed for the purpose of discovering truth. And yet yeah. it is irrational for me to believe that human reason was designed and created by God to enable us to understand and believe the truth. Curious logic. Hmm. By contrast with that, biblical theism asserts that ultimate reality is personal and intelligent and the reason science works and this was the motivating force that drove the great pioneers of science is that the universe out there and the human mind in here that does the science are ultimately the product of the same intelligent divine mind human beings are made we are told in god's image and that means that science can be done that makes infinitely more sense to me as a True. scientist True. than atheism does. True. Now let me come briefly to ethics. Ethical behavior, like rational behavior, of course, does not itself require religious belief. This is consistent with the fact that humans are created in God's image as rational moral persons. But just as I suggest that rationality cannot be explained without the existence of God, so I dare to suggest that the existence of morality cannot be explained either. As modern science sprang from Judeo-Christian sources, so did the concept of human equality. Listen to atheist Jürgen Habermas, arguably one of Germany's leading intellectuals. He said that universalistic egalitarianism from which sprang the ideals of freedom and a collective life and solidarity, the individual morality of conscience, human rights and democracy is the direct legacy of the Judaic ethic of justice and the Christian ethic of love. This legacy, substantially unchanged, has been the object of continual critical appropriation and reinterpretation. To this day, there's no alternative to it. Everything else is just idle postmodern talk. And it seems to me he's hitting the core of something important because the value of a human being on which such egalitarianism rests is based not on what the human being can do, but what she's made of, or how she's made in God's image. I never forget speaking when, on one of my many visits to Russia uh, to a colleague in the Academy of Sciences. And he said, you know, John, we thought we could abolish God and retain a value for human beings. We found we couldn't, mm. and we murdered millions of them. And Alexander Solzhenitsyn has said, if I'm asked, why is it that 60 million of my fellow countrymen were sacrificed? He said, the answer is, we have forgotten God. That's true. Science, of course, marvelous as it is, is limited. Even a Nobel Prize winner by analyzing a cake cannot tell why it was made. But Aunt Matilda, who made it, can tell you. <laughs> she can reveal it to you. But if she doesn't reveal it to you, you'll never know. And that brings me to be my next evidence. It's the same with the universe. We can analyze it magnificently. 
But ultimately, if it has a maker, and I believe it has, only he can tell us what it's all about. And he's done so in the powerful narrative of the Bible, in particular in its analysis of the problem with humanity, not simply in terms of behavioral breakdown between people, but a vertical breakdown of trust between us and the Creator. The unique solution to that problem is not simply in terms of human ethical development, although that's very important, but in terms of something far deeper altogether. The restoration of the fractured relationship with God through the salvation he has brought through Jesus Christ. A radical relationship that empowers us to live ethically from God. And here we reach what for me is the chief evidence, not only for the existence but the nature of God. It is Jesus Christ. He it was who not only taught the golden rule but embodied it, fed the hungry, healed the sick and suffering and welcomed society's outcasts, brought honor and respect to the marginalized and ashamed. And he's brought forgiveness and peace to multi-millions uh, around the world. He's able to do this, of course, because though he was a man, he uniquely never was only a man, but God True. become human. Indeed. The central evidence for this startling claim is, of course, his historical resurrection from the dead that launched Christianity in the world. This is, of course, ladies and gentlemen, a crunch issue. If Jesus rose from the dead, death is not the end and atheism is false. If Jesus did, rise, did, did not rise from death. the dead, Christianity is false. True. And I remember at Cambridge as a student listening to the brilliant Sir Norman Anderson, a legal expert, going through forensically the evidence from his legal perspective as a, a brilliant lawyer. And he said at the end of it, the empty tomb then of Jesus forms a veritable rock on which all rationalistic theories of the resurrection dash themselves in vain. Just finally now, as I read the Bible, I do not only find intellectual satisfaction, but I find a great deal of that. I sense the voice of God speaking to me. You say, that's intensely personal. But ladies and gentlemen, we've been asked tonight about belief in God. And I want to strongly emphasize that God is not a theory, he's a person. Mm. And if the origination of me qua person is a personal God, then the most exciting thing really is, is there a possibility of getting to know God? And so I don't simply believe there is a God. I've come to know him and trust him. And I have strong reasons for doing so because of Christ dying and rising again for me. And that has generated in me a sense of utterly unmerited forgiveness, acceptance, and peace that has enabled me to face the ugly side of my own nature and with God's help to do something about it. But it's enabled me to face something else. The hardest problem I face as a Christian is the problem of evil and pain. My niece getting a tumor at 22 that kills her. What do I say to my sister? And this is the hardest problem we face. But it seems to me that atheism here has no answer because by definition, atheism believes that human death is the end so there is no ultimate That's true. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, we could stay here till midnight and beyond arguing, as has been done in this university for centuries, what a good God should, might, would, could, if not, possibly might, just could he not have done, and we'll get nowhere. So it seems to me there's another question we can ask, and it's this. Granted that life is, presents us with a double picture, we see some beautiful things. We see some ragged edges. We see hurt and pain, and we see joy. How can we come to terms with that? And it seems to me here is no simplistic answer, but a window into an answer, and it's this. If it is actually true that Jesus is, as I believe him to be, the Son of God, then we can ask the question, what is God doing on a cross? And the answer comes back at the very least. God has not remained distant from our human suffering, but has become part of it. Mm. And the other side of that is this. Because Jesus rose from the dead, 
He is going to be the ultimate judge. Hmm. Now, here's an irony, because atheism has no ultimate hope of justice by definition. The vast majority of people in the history of the world have died without justice and will die without justice. And if death is the end, then, of course, they have no hope of ju ultimate justice. But the promise in the New Testament, guaranteed by the resurrection of Jesus, is that he is to be the judge in the coming day. So, ladies and gentlemen, those are some of the reasons why I believe that God is real and worthy to be trusted. Thank you. When Christians talk about God, it is personal. It's not fantasy. It's not the spaghetti monster in the sky. That was good. That was really, really, really good. I really do learn a lot. I felt like he was preaching. Like, he was preaching to the congregation, like everyone. He was preaching to them and giving them specific facts why God is real. It's not just um, a myth or a study. He's real. He's real. So, um, the letter, the, it's best you acknowledge it right now. That's to regret later. Because being an atheist, you don't have anything to believe in. You don't believe um, in Buddhism. You don't believe in Christianity. You don't believe in um, Muslim and Islam. You don't believe in that. But choosing to believe something, like Christian, Christian faith being God, Jesus Christ, if you choose to believe in Jesus Christ and, and in God, or a religion, there's something you have to hold on to than having nothing to hold on to. I don't know if you get me. Like it's it's best you have a religion that you are in. True better being right or wrong. Yes, really there's some there's something you surely believe in because this entire world did not create do not start on its own. The Muslim referred to Jesus Christ, the Buddhism they talk about Jesus. Christians were talking about Jesus. There's something about that man. There's something about that God that you need to look up to. Like, look at specifically. What is it about this specific person that everyone is talking about? The most talked about man in the entire world, Jesus Christ. Like, what is it about him? That is when you have to make research. Being an atheist, like, you have to make more research about is this my actual way? Is he meat? The more you dig into Jesus Christ's story, the more you learn, like, this is actually true. It can never be a myth. It can never be like a story. Like it's not true. It's true. So the more you dig into it, the more you learn. That's why reading is very important. Jesus, um, the, the Bible said, my people perish out of lack of knowledge. People don't read that. People don't really dig into it well enough. That's why they like they lack knowledge about what the religion is about. So if you being an atheist and you believe that there's a big bang theory, everything came out for nothing. It's not true because nothing plus nothing gives you nothing. But nothing plus God gives you something. Because there is always a creator. There is always a creator. You can't just tell me that this microphone came on its own. I just met it over here. It came on its own. No, there was someone who thought about an idea. Thought about the design. I made it possible. So there's always a creator in everything. In everything. Like nothing that comes out on his own. There is absolutely nothing. There's a creator for everything that we have right now. So being an atheist and you still don't believe, I, 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 for me, I would suggest you, you have something to hold on to. There's, you have to have something to believe in. I mean, being a Christian from childhood, I totally believe, I totally believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Messiah. I believe in the Trinity. Like, I have experienced it myself and I know it's real. So, I feel like you guys, being an, you, it is have to make more research and no more. This man does open more eyes. He does preach to the entire people right there. Like everyone right there now know about Jesus Christ. Everyone right there know about God. So at the last day, you have no excuse because he have just spoken to you right there. And you choose not to acknowledge or you acknowledge. So you better make a right decision. I feel like this was a very brilliant video and very educative i also learned a lot from him because he spoke facts that is undeniable true and he gave his reason for believing god and that's totally true if you ignore this fact i don't feel i don't think there's another proof that they can give you that you believe that is that god exists so for me
This is absolutely true, and I 100% agree with him. So comment down below what you think about this video. Give us a thumbs up. Share this video to as many as can. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, guys. You know how to do it. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just want a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, in my bed. I got scales on.